Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and this is Let's Make Art and we letter together as a community every week. And you are here for a fun project where we're going to be incorporating lettering and watercolors together to make these two projects. So the different supplies that we're using, there's three different colors that you have. One is yellow ochre, the second is magenta, and the third is Tahoe Blue. I will be using, actually it's a new new brush, but you can use any brush that you have. I'm gonna be using a round two. It's just in a different, different color handle, but it's from the Princeton series. So you can use any brush that you have. Then the paper I'm using is the Canton watercolor paper. Now, the four different steps are, the first thing is you will notice that it looks a little bit different than what we've been doing before. So we're gonna be doing bubble lettering and I'll show you how to create that. The second step is I'm gonna show you how to do the watercolors. So you're gonna be doing the outside and paint in the negative space. The third step is adding the patterns and the fourth step is going to be adding the shadow. You might not be able to see it on that one, but you can definitely see the shadow here on this one. Totally. Cool. Okay, so the first step is, you will notice that these this paper is a little bit smaller. So I cut a nine by 12 piece in half. You can 100% do that. You can also, if you want to keep it a big sheet, you can do that. These are perfect also for cards. They're, it's, a, it's a great project that you can apply to any size paper that you would like to use. Okay, so for the, move this. For the bubble lettering, to explain how to create this, because I know when you look at this, you might think, how do I do that? So I wanna break it down to show you that there's a few simple steps that you can do. First is there's a practice worksheet that you can download on our website at letsmakeart.com if you go to the learn with us tab. And you'll notice that there, <laughs> Sarah had actually drawn in some of them already. So you have a head, or this is a head start. But what it is, is this is the backbone for creating the bubble lettering. So it's just a way for you to practice. So what you're doing is you'll, you'll see the skeleton A right here. Am I in a cool spot? Yep. Okay. So what I want you to do is if you want to practice once with me, is I want you to draw a line and you're going to draw on the outside of the skeleton about a similar width. It doesn't matter how big because you'll notice that the more space you give, the bigger your lettering will look. So it's up to you how you want to craft your own letter. So I'm going to do the same thing and I'm just going to follow the line and just add a little bit of space in between. And then what you do is you do the same thing here in the middle. So I know that it looks a little weird because you see the skeleton right now, but if you imagine that is what this will look like when you do it on your final project. So this is a good practice because I think what happens is that if you were to do it right off the bat, you might not know what you might not know what size everything is, where to draw the line. So by using this as a guideline, this is just a great practice that I created for you to help yourself out. So if you want to push pause, you can take some time to practice that as well. The whole alphabet is there. And the other thing that I wanted to note is you'll notice that one looks like this, and then the second one has these lines. So those lines are called serifs. So they are just ends, they're, they're lines that go at the ends of the letters. So when you're doing that, you would take the same concept as following the lines, but you'll notice that they create these kind of brick-like shapes on your letters. So this is a style preference, or just a different style that you can use as well. So I just wanted to call that out. Now, do you I like, like the, serif? Or? I like the serif with the bubbles especially. Yeah. Yeah. Because I feel like you would like that. Big fan. The other practice worksheet that I created for you is this is to help you with if you want to do a four letter word like we did here, is you could take the time to practice as well. So you would take the same concept so you can draw if you were to write love. You can draw your own skeleton and then you would draw around it and then you can erase it. So I'm going to do that on the final one, but I wanted to show you that if you feel more comfortable taking the time to do it on here, practice, warm up, that is what this practice sheet is for for you. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it right off the bat just on my watercolor paper to show you and execute directly on here. So I'm going to start and I'm going to do a combination. I'm going to do write love, but I'm going to do it in this color palette just to mix it up, just to show you guys a different colorway. But I'm going to take the same thing and I'm going to eyeball it. So if you even want, you can draw yourself quadrants if that helps you too. It's up to you. That was really light. I really just might be able to see that. But that might help you if you'd like to do that. I'm going to draw in the first quadrant and I'm just going to draw an L and draw my serifs. So again, they're just lines on the end. I'm just kind of sketching these out and you can decide how big you want them to be. These are pretty big. You can make them smaller if you want. You can make them shorter. I'm going to make them, I'm going to fill in this whole space. So I'm drawing lines on the end. So that is my skeleton. Now, the reason why, if you look at this, if I erase this, what I just want to note for you is that if you look at this, Keenan, does it, do they look kind of spread out? They look, they look like there's a lot of space in between yeah. here. So they got some breathing room. Yeah. And the reason why is because when we add the line, the bubble lettering on the outside, it will, you'll be drawing and filling in the space a little bit more. Mm. So I need to leave myself some room. So I'm sketching that out. That also makes it to where the other great thing about a pencil is that you can figure it out. If you finish your skeleton and then you're like, oh, that's a lot of space. Then you realize like I just did, you need space to do bubble letters. <laughs> yes, that's very true too. That's why I love just using the pencil first so I can kind of sketch it out. So I'm gonna draw this other one. Oh, I also wanted to say is when you, especially on the O, you might think, okay, I'm gonna draw my circle really small in the middle. Can you see how, and maybe you make them purposely different. This, the size of this letter looks a lot skinnier than the size of this. And that's simply because where I placed this circle. So if I were to erase this. That looks more like a donut. <laughs> and make it, that circle a little bit bigger that makes the line stroke a little bit more even. I kind of want to mix it up and I just want to make it bigger just because. Make a donut. Yeah, donuts are good. <laughs> so I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm gonna make this What kind of donut bigger. is that? What's your favorite What's donut? Oh man, I love the cake donut with chocolate frosting on it. So like the really? chocolate cake donut with the chocolate frosting. That's my favorite. But <laughs> the best is just the classic like a Krispy Kreme glazed donut. Yep. You know what I mean? My favorite's actually uh, the old fashioned glaze. Do you like those? What do you mean old fashioned glaze? Like a... An, a old fashioned donut? Like old a fashioned? traditional gla glazed donut? Isn't that a specific, it's a specific type. I don't like know. Like they're not fluffy, they're harder. Oh, interesting. Have you never had an old fashioned I donut? Know. I don't know. Oh my gosh, are there uh, donut places here in Missouri? There's... Yes, yes. Lily got one. I mean, I meant in Hamilton. I didn't mean it. Hmm. Missouri might be the Midwest, but... <laughs> Actually, I think you need even more. We've got donuts for sure. Even more. Okay, I'm going to buy you an old-fashioned donut. Yeah, it's a type. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say, I realized, is on the E, if you're doing the E, you can decide if you want to have a serif or an extension on the edge of that as well. So I'm going to do that just to show you as an option. So again, am oh, I, I like sketching... That. Am I sketching dark enough? Yeah, yeah. I know it looks, that's it looks good. sometimes that bothers people. Okay. And then the other thing that's a little bit different that I did is I added a serif on this one. Just goes to show that you can you can That E means business with make that your own. the back. Serif. You like it with those? Yeah. It feels like a um, school letters. What am I thinking of? University like type of letter. mascot? Letter? No. I'm going to open this up. Alpha, a beta, <laughs> Not beta right. I don't know what those are called. <laughs> sororities. Greek. <laughs> That's all. I just want to make that a little bit whiter. Okay. If you rotate it, the E looks like a mask. This way? Yeah. 
No. I don't see it. <laughs> I don't see it. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. It's fine. I, I'm sure other people do. Um, now, you might be thinking, where do I add a serif on the O? If you weren't, I'm just going to ask. pretend like you asked me that question. Yeah. That is up to you. You can either leave it like that, or if you do want to add, in, add a serif, you can pretend like it's where it connected, and you draw it like that. The reason why I don't do that is because it looks like an upside down Q. Yeah. Or a Frankenstein O. <laughs> it's got a bolt holding it together. <laughs> yes. So if I just wanted to call that out. If you do want to add it, you can, or you don't have to. Now. I'm gonna make this a little bit longer because I saw a little bit more space right there. The other cool thing, look at how long. I'm gonna leave that. The serif's really long and wide. Okay, have fun with adding your, doing your bubble lettering. Now, for the watercolors. I am using, I want to show you how you can use this color wheel. So this is something that I created that has the three main colors that we're using. We're using yellow ochre, <coughs> Tahoe blue and magenta. And so what, I'm, I'm gonna use these colors, so this side of the color wheel, so the warmer colors to create this color palette. And what I have here is I have that all set up actually. I have my ochre here, yellow ochre here, and then my magenta. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mix, pre-mix my colors. And so what that means is I'm gonna have more magenta because it's closer to my magenta and then have less here and then I'm gonna take my yellow ochre, have more yellow in this one, because it's closer to my yellow, just a little bit, and then just a dot. So when I mix them, you will get three different colors. So let's see what we got. Might not be a perfect run every time, but that is that looks more like clay that's like an orangey so this is the middle one as the i like that's that like a red yeah and then ooh, that's a really pretty color yeah it is so that's the raspberry so i i'm not you can decide how how many colors you want to pre-mix if you think about it you can have four different colors you can also make the seams a different color. So don't feel like you have to have a perfect amount of, um, amount of colors to start out with. I just wanted to get myself started a little bit. And then I'm actually going to do one more just in case because I want to have a purpley color. So to do that is I'm going to take my magenta and I'm going to add a little bit of blue. So I'm going to take my magenta. So I need to have a lot more actually magenta. So that'll be over there. So if I want to make an in-between color, I'm just going to pull some of that, pull some of that, and make a in-between color. Okay. Now that I got that set up, I'm going to go for it. Oh. Now, when you're doing this, we are painting the negative space. So I'm not going to actually color in the letter. I'm going to paint on the outside of it. So I'm going to start with my first color. Just had a little bit of water, hit it off to the side. You don't want too much water. And then you simply just color outside the lines. That looks like a gold. I realize probably no one's ever said color outside the lines. Sorry. Yes, it is a gold. Because <laughs> usually you hear color inside the lines. That's true. Color outside the lines. So I'm, when I'm doing this also, once I get to the edge, is I'm going to just create kind of a round corner. Because as you see here, I didn't go all the way to the edge. That's kind of a personal preference if you want to. Oh, oh, color everywhere. Yeah, that's a really pretty color. So maybe on this one, I didn't even start with the yellow. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just slowly start to integrate and do the next color. And the cool thing is that you can always go back and dip. I'm going to go back into my yellow ochre. And so it kind of mixes that mm. like in between color. So it's not quite the second color yet. Just kind of swipe over. 
So you can see I'm not, I'm not being too precise. I'm just kind of painting, seeing what comes out. Moving along. And so let's see, I have some yellow here at the bottom. And if you get to a spot like here that was dry, that's okay. Just go, and I got some yellow and just overlapped a little bit. So the cool thing about watercolor is that even if it's dry, you can just add some more color to it, work around it. So I'm gonna keep going. So again, I'm going on the outside. Now, I want to get to the next color as well. Keep going. So again, I'm gonna round out that corner. If it ever gets too dry, so you can see it kind of gets scratchy, if you ever find that and you're not really comfortable with watercolors, just get a little bit more water and that will help it get back going. Because the thing is that these watercolors obviously are liquid, but sometimes they need just a little bit of water to get them going. Flowing. And flowing, glowing. So I'm gonna mix back, so I'm going back. So I'm kind of just picking up colors. They don't, it's okay even if I accidentally picked up my yellow and mixed that in. It doesn't need to be a perfect ombre. And it kind of looks cool if you mixed all in. And now when you're shaping your O, you can reshape it a little bit more if it starts to get wonky. I kind of even went over my lines a little bit. It's all good. Now, I am going to move down to my V, and so I'm gonna turn my palette a little bit more, and I'm going to start to mix into the next color. So this is kind of, I think this is the raspberry color. But what I'm thinking is, if I start with this color, you'll see how this connection is pretty drastic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna kinda of mix in a few of the lighter colors and then just kind of fill in that seam. Mm. Just kind of go back over. So we'll end up, then I'm gonna get some water, and I'm just gonna blend that in there. So you'll probably end up doing going over that, especially the seams, just a few times, but that's the trick to kind of transitioning it. So you're moving fairly quickly. But the cool thing is that, again, we're just painting on the outside. And then if you want to be more meticulous about when you get to the shape of the letter, that's when you can go slower. But on the outside, have fun. And the color, so you'll notice I kind of skip around. It's personal preference if you want to start and go clockwise, or counterclockwise or go clockwise, whatever works for you. corner. This okay. seems to be like a perfect size brush for this project because you got to be a little more detailed to mind your letters, but it's also washing quite well. Yeah, it is. I really like this brush. So I'm going to start to, what I'm doing is, I don't know, oh yeah, this is the, the next color. Now, need a little bit more water. I, this was my really dark color, I think. My palette kind of got everywhere. I want to just pick up some of the purple, but I want a little bit more of a magenta-y purple, not so much a straight purple. So I'm gonna mix that in. Oh, got some color on there. It's okay. So whenever I, if I ever mess up, if you add water to it, it kind of gets it a little bit more off. That didn't completely get it off, but it's not as dark if that ever happens to you. Okay. But that just adds personal touch. Yeah. It's all good. Okay, it's getting, need to add some water, kind of blend that into it.
that's pretty. So I'm going into my purple. This that is really is a good relaxing. color. Yeah, what is, yeah, so this is the, it's like a mix between the royal purple. It's like the orchid color. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that I just want to say is I know that you're, this is a lettering tutorial, but this is also a mix of watercolors. So what I want to say is if you'll notice is that just for me, I tend to move my hand. Like sometimes I'll paint here, sometimes I'll paint like this. So I shift my hand. So don't feel intimidated by watercolors if this is your first time doing it. The beauty of them is that they're really forgiving. And so I would rather you just give it a try than be worried about how am I holding my brush? Am I doing it right? Don't worry so much about that. I just want you to give it a try. So around that corner. I'm gonna mix that right there. Okay. Nice. Now, looking at it, what you can do is if you want, and I'm not going to, but I just want to tell you is that there's some corners right here that got a little soft. I actually like it. I think it gives more personality to it. But if you want to go, you can kind of fine tune that. But I wouldn't work so much on it because the thing with watercolors is that if you work too much on it with water, it will start to tear the paper. So I just want to be mindful of that. I realized I forgot the center of my, my donut. So I need to go back. Let's mix a little bit there and color that in. Is this a filled donut or is this? Is this a what? A filled donut. <laughs> That's what it could be. It's like a maple colored. Ooh, I also like the, uh, the chocolate long john donuts. I've Those never are, heard them called chocolate long john. Well, they're just long john. But well, yes, long john. Long john. <laughs> yeah, they're fantastic. Well, because if I get a maple one, it's not that great. But if there's chocolate on it, it's great. So, do you call it maple long johns? Well, there's a maple long john, and then there's your regular slash ma not maple long john. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I was thinking a few things while you're talking. It's super interesting, especially from up top. I, it's just funny to look how I did that a lot quicker, but you can even tell just by the shapes of the letters. So these are a lot taller than these ones especially, and they're bigger. So that's why this fills even more of the paper out. So I just wanted to call that out. That makes sense. Because does it look different? It does look different. Yeah. I actually didn't notice it until you pointed it out. Oh. Well, I'm glad then that I pointed it out so then you can see just how unique your own letters can be. Now, while that is drying, I think I spit a few times, so it Perfect. got some. That adds texture. <laughs> Which you can do that. If you want to add, you can add some water droplets or some salt texture if you'd like. Ooh, salt. Which Sarah has a few tutorials on that. Which one is a good one to recommend for the salt texture? Excellent question. Okay, we'll link it. I like the galaxy ones. I think the wolf galaxy, uh -huh. which also looks like it's sleeping on its side. And I say that in the tutorial. <laughs> yeah, that, but that's a good one. Any of the galaxy ones that have salt are just so great. Or bleed proof white. Oh yeah. Dang, there's a lot. You can add that as well. Or if you have uh, Sarah's micron pen, you can also outline that as well. That could look really cool. So many different options. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to show you how you can add some patterns to your lettering. So I have the, all of my letters are blank right now. If you need to take some time to erase the inside a little bit more, you can. But I'm going to add some patterns in it. So I'm going to take my watercolors and I'm going to start, I need to add a few more, a little bit more water colors because they got a little washed up. Okay, so I'm gonna take my color, and for the first one is I'm going to add dots. So this is how you add character to your letters. You can choose your own pattern. I'm just gonna show you a few of them that I like to do. 
So I'm gonna add dots. So I'm gonna pretend and I can actually kind of see it. I know you might not be able to see it on camera, but I can see my skeleton line. And so what I'm gonna do is on that skeleton line with a little bit of space between, I'm gonna draw dots. In the middle, that's a little wet. On the O, we're gonna call these sprinkles. Oh, I was gonna do, oh yes! Well, you can do sprinkles as well. Okay, I'll do sprinkles for you. Okay, perfect, thank you. So I I'm appreciate gonna that. Mix in a few different, I need to get that more orangey clay color. Okay, so then for lines, yes, you can do them. We can make some sprinkles for Keenan. Sprinkles are all different size and kind of all different colors. Mm -hmm. There's even star sprinkles and glitter sprinkles. Oh, yes. I was like, wait, what? So I'm going to add in a few different colors. Did you bring any glitter sprinkles? <laughs> I forgot them. Dang. That would have been really convenient. All the way in California. <laughs> There's Keenan Sprinkled Donut. Now, I am going to, on this one, I'm gonna show how, let's get some magenta. A cool look, so taking the sprinkles concept of just drawing lines, I'm gonna draw it where, from the bottom, the lines are gonna be close together. And then as you move up, the lines are going to get more spread out. Are those the slimming kind of lines? Those or is it vertical lines that are slimming? I never know. <laughs> Either way, that V is looking good. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the other way. I think this makes letters look, or letters makes. Slimming. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're just going to call it that. So you could, I can, I even added a few more. So it's just a fun way to add some lines, but it just creates a cool effect because it looks like there's a lot more, more, it kind of looks like it's moving, especially on these ones. It just creates some fun movement. I want to add a little bit more. Oh, it makes me think of a retro video game. Oh, I like that. With a donut. With a donut. Now I'm going to add some, do some purple. Let's see, what else can we do? I'm gonna mix it up. Uh, I mean, you could do more lines, but a different direction. That's Di true. Diagonal. Yeah, you can do them diagonal. You could do triangles instead of circles. Oh. Tiny little triangles. I'm trying to think. You could do equal, sign, e equal signs and then uh, the number two. Excuse me? <laughs> and then the letters MC. Inside the letter E. What? Well, I don't get it. E equals MC squared. Oh my, I was like, wait, there's something that I'm just not clicking right now. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Wow, look at you. I said it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing your triangles. Thanks. So yes, you can do any shape along the skeleton line. Sorry, it was paused. Those are good Dorito shapes. Oh, add some blue in. Wrong color. It's all good. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's kind of fun, actually. I'm going to do it. makes me think of a, ombre. a hoodie or a t-shirt design I've seen recently. <laughs> Seems to be a trend. There. Oh. I forgot about these ones. That looks really cool, Keenan. That Kenan. is cool. Dang, nice. Good idea. Adding it. There we go. Okay, wow, this is such a fun party one, I feel like. Now that I have that, I am going to make the letters pop even more. And so you'll notice that there is a shadow on the left side of the line. So if you've ever heard me talk about shadows, you can decide which, which side of the letter you want to add your shadows. In this case, I'm saying that my light source is coming from here. It's hitting the letter and casting a shadow on the left side of every single letter. So when I'm drawing this the or painting the shadows, 
just make sure it's a darker color than the original layer down here. So I'm gonna get a little bit of a darker color. It doesn't matter, you can make them all the same color, you can make them whatever colors you want. The trick is just to make it a little bit darker so it pops. Ooh, that's a little wet right there. It's okay, I'm gonna keep going. Now, when I'm doing this is I'm going to draw a line. Oops, nope. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That color is really dark too. I want a little bit lighter of a color. Okay. So what I was gonna say is I'm leaving a little bit of space, not really even anymore. If you want, <laughs> you can leave a little <laughs> bit of space in between <laughs> the, the white space. So you'll see on this one, there's just a little bit of space. You can do that, or you can choose to have the, the shadow hug right up against the letter. It's up to you. It's probably cool that I'm showing different ways. But I'm drawing it, and I need to pick up a little bit darker color. So you can decide also, the fun thing, is how thick your shadow is. So on these ones, you can't tell as much. On these ones, the shadow is a little bit thinner, and on this one, I made them a little bit thicker. So what that does if it, is if it's thicker, it makes them look a little bit further away. Oh. Right, is it doing that? Yeah. So now I'm gonna pick up and get a little bit of color. So on the O, I'm gonna draw that. And for this one is I'm going to, once it gets to the top, I'm just gonna draw a little bit of a thinner line because it's gonna curve out when it gets there. And the reason why I have the shadow on the bottom is because my light source is coming from up here. If you decided your light source was just coming from the side, then it would hit here and cast a shadow. You wouldn't see one on the bottom. My L got a little funky right there, but that's okay. And then if you notice, you're like, oh man, my shadow is disappearing, just make it a little bit darker and paint back over it. And for the O, my shadow is going to be, so if I hit here, it's hitting this part of the stroke and it's gonna cast a shadow. Wait, is that right? Yes, right here. I had to think about it for a second. Because if it hits, mm. it, the light is shining here, so that's why it's bright here, and then it casts a shadow there. But again, yeah. it's hitting this and then casting a shadow. What were you gonna say? Yep. Do you want to shift that to your left? Should I have done that the whole time? No, because like it was mostly just a wash. Oh, okay. Until now, really. True. Okay. Now, I'm going to do the same thing. So on this one, actually, I want to show you the contrast. This is just going to be a, a hodgepodge of a, a project. But I want to show you is that if I draw a really thin line, the difference of what it would look like. So the same thing, I'm thinking about it, it hits here, it's gonna cast a shadow right there. So can you see the difference of how that looks a little bit different than those ones? Totally. So either one works now. You I think it. I like that thin line one a lot. You like the thinner one better? Yeah. I'll do the same thing down here. It's gonna go extra thin. So on the E, it's hitting here. It's gonna cast a shadow below. Same thing here. I really like that E. It's a good E. Thanks, Keenan. darker yeah whoa it's cool how much it disappears into it yeah do you see that I'm gonna leave that okay that's it nice <laughs> I was like wait is there anything else so if you want like I was saying if you want to even um, you can take it could look cool if you have a, a thin pen if you outline 
the lines on top of it. That's another idea if you want to continue to add to it. But I hope that you had fun being able to see the layers and layers that we did because at first it looked kind of weird, but once you add the patterns and then you add the shadows, it'll just pop even more. I realize I should have said this in the beginning, but if there's, if there's any other four letter words that you want to do, you can do this. You can also do this if, if you, you don't even need to have four letter words. You can turn it this way and you can write the word like that. So again, there's so many different ways and that's why I hope all the projects that we're teaching you here are just an inspiration for you to see that there's so many ways that you can take this concept that you're learning here and make it your own. I hope you had fun. If you're not already a part of it, we have a Facebook group called Let's Make Art Lettering that I'd love for you to join. We have an Instagram called Let's Go Make Art. It's a little bit different, but there's a go in that one. And I think that's it. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend and I'll see you guys soon.